Alrighty. So, the questions today, we've got two of them. FM radio stations are numbered from 88 to 108. Any guesses on what those numbers mean? They're the frequency that the station's on? Exactly. So each of these are frequency. And in green, you might have heard people breathe in helium and then talk like they're little uh, dwarfs or something because uh, they sound really high-pitched. So any idea what's going on with that? Yes? Gas is lighter. And what does that mean is going to happen to the sound waves? Good guess. So... We have sound waves that are traveling from our vocal cords to our ears. And what's the only way those waves are going to change their speed? By changing the medium they're traveling through. And that's what we're doing here. So you're changing the medium that those waves are traveling through. You're changing the medium that those waves are traveling through. So I'll tell you what, what's not happening. What's not happening is your vocal cords vibrating faster. That's not what's going on. Your vocal cords are going to vibrate at the same rate no matter what. But if you have helium in there instead of regular air, waves can move a lot more quickly in that particular medium. And so you hear that as a higher pitch because you've got, because they're moving faster, you've got more waves passing a certain point every second. That's the same thing as frequency. So you hear a higher pitch sound when that occurs. Now, um, there's a little bit of bad news today, and there's a little bit of good news. So the bad news is, the way I'd usually do this is, uh, I had paid Party City a little visit yesterday. And um, I would demonstrate this once, and then I would have volunteers come up and demonstrate it as well. And it's always a hoot. Um, exactly. So it looks like I'm the only one that's going to get to do this today. So you'll just have to live with that. And... Uh, I'll see if I can demonstrate this for you a little bit. How many of you guys are familiar with uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Anybody? A couple people? When I was a wee lad, that was like the, the main show that, that I watched. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood there. And I saw it so many times that I actually still have the beginning theme song memorized. Exactly. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor. Just like you, I've always wanted to live in the neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say... Would you be my, could you be my, or won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> nice job in chapel. So yes, for helium, uh, the reason that your voice is much higher is because you're changing the speed of the wave. Uh, and that occurs because you're changing the medium that that wave is traveling through. So I'm going to see if I can save some of this for my other physics classes. I do have one other balloon, so it should be okay. Boy, I got kind of lightheaded at the beginning there. 
That tends to happen when you're not breathing oxygen in anymore. I literally thought that you were playing like a cartoon video. Because <laughs> I heard you You'll have to watch the, uh, the the YouTube video of the class so you can hear the entire song. Okay. Did you ever watch Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood? Um, I've seen a little bit. Okay. I watched it a lot as a little kid, so I had the theme song memorized. I'll get that stamped for you. All right, so we will be talking about some new things today, but before we get to those brand new things, let's talk about worksheet number one. Anything that you would like to go through? Sure. Number three. So it looks like we've got that wave going from a light rope to a heavy one. So what, what's going to end up happening here is you're going to have part of that wave being transmitted into the heavy rope. And part of that wave is going to reflect back because when it encounters the heavy one, it kind of acts partially like a fixed end. So because it starts up, it's going to flip and be upside down. So this is what your result would be for number three. Other questions on the worksheet? Yes. 6B. 6B. Okay, why don't we do both of them for number six? This was the tricky one. So for 6A, it says the right rope is the heavy rope. And the left one is the light one. So basically, 6A, we got to figure out what's going to give us the picture that it shows us there, kind of in the top right. So we've got one wave underneath that's moving to the right. We've got one wave on the top that's moving to the left. So how do we have to shake this in order to get that picture? And we've got four choices. We either send a wave down this way, we send a wave down like that, or we begin here, or we begin there. Now, anybody want to make a guess before we finish this? What did you end up with? Which of those four choices? <laughs> yes, Zach? Bottom left? Bottom left? Let's see. So if we would do the bottom left, we would have this wave coming in. After it came in, part of it would be transmitted. So you'd have a little wave going like this. And part of this wave would encounter the heavy rope. It would reverse direction, and it would flip, because it's kind of acting like a fixed end. And this is what you would have if you choose this. Does this match up with the picture? Sure does. So that's exactly what you should pick for letter A. You're shaking it so that the wave starts on the left, on the bottom, and it's moving to the right. 6B is the same thing, except we're switching which string is light and heavy. So we got those same four choices. And <clears throat> in order to get two waves at all, you have to start with the light side. Because if you start on the heavy side and you produce a wave, you're not going to get any reflection back this way. We know that the answer has to have two waves in them, so that means we have to start over here with something, in the same way that we started with the light string on the first example. So we've got two options. Does, do we have to shake it up here or down there? And it looks like, let's see, looks like the uh, transmitted wave ends up 
on top here, moving to the left. So this would be the answer to 6b. Because if we're doing this, and this wave moves to the left, part of that wave is going to be transmitted. And part of that wave is going to hit this heavy part, reflect, and go back the other way, upside down. And this is what that picture shows. This is for B, yep. Nice. Other questions on the worksheet? I'm going to come around and grab that from you. Speaking of that helium stuff, I've told you guys what I think we should do with these gas lines, right? I think we should take out the natural gas and uh, have one valve be helium and have one valve be laughing gas. I think that would be a, a fun combination. So um, that's it for worksheet number one. Now we have to do something brand new. Uh, get out your notes. We're going to be taking a few notes today. So before we actually start taking notes, I want to show you something with the slinky again. Uh, so we're going to head to the back. Be back after these messages. Uh, 
I see three, and that's okay. So still both my hand and Mel's hand. And if you look in the very middle, there's a spot on the slinky that really isn't moving very much at all. So that would be your third node here. This would be a full wave away. So this would be a full wave that we're observing right here. How many waves was the first one? First one was half of a wavelength. Let's see if I can get mode number three. So there's your third mode. Third mode is basically three bubbles like that. So you can see now we've got four nodes. And every time you increase your mode by one, you're increasing your wave or your wavelength by a half. So we started with a wavelength of 0 0.5, one half. And then we had one full wave for mode number two. So now we've got one and a half waves for mode number three. See if we can get mode number four. There's mode number four. How many waves are present here? Two, yeah. Here's mode number five. How many waves are present here? Yeah, two and a half then, because we're still increasing by a half. I don't know how fast I can get this. That might be six. My arm's getting tired. So yeah, uh, you can head back to your seats. We'll make some sense of this. Thank you, Bell. Nice job. And we're back. So you're going to title your notes, Resonant Wave Behavior. Resonant Wave Behavior. I got these brand new rags from Walmart yesterday. And they erase way better than my old rags. And that's what gets me excited. <laughs> so Resonant Wave Behavior. And write down modes of vibration. For a double fixed end. So how many waves were present for the first mode? Half, exactly, 0 0.5. And the second? Yep. And you remember the pattern. We increase by half of a wave for each mode. Yeah, you can think of it in terms of wavelengths. So a half of a wave is the same thing as saying half of a wavelength. What's it? You got it. Exactly. And another name for this first mode is the fundamental frequency. So if it would ever ask you to do something with the fundamental frequency, it's talking about the first mode. A node, you probably don't have to write this down, but a node is present at a fixed end, and an anti-node is present at a free end. So if you have a free end, which we did not have, 
that would mean the end of your slinky is free to move all over the place. But in our example, both Val and I were holding on tight to the ends. So that is an example of two fixed ends. Uh, another name for a fixed end is a closed end. You might want to put that in parentheses. It's too bad. There's two things, two ways to say everything. <laughs> but yeah, closed end is another name for that. So the other really important thing that we have to know about modes before we dive into actually using this has to do with wave length. Okay. So this is like a certain amount of wave length. So this is half a wave length, that's equal to half of a wave. One full wave length is equal to one wave. But sometimes, this doesn't tell you what the actual wave length is, because when we were in the back of the room, that whole distance was probably like 15 feet or so. And so your wave length is not going to be this value. So we need to find out exactly how we're going to calculate that wave length. And that's coming next. This is the equation you should always shoot, always use when you're calculating the wavelength of resonant wave behavior. So the reason I didn't label the waves as wavelength is we just we we reserve wavelength for the actual distance, the actual number that your wavelength is. And so we'll practice uh, how this works, and you'll see exactly what's going on here. So real quick before we do that though, I just want to show you one more time about these modes. Wow, what mode is that? Kind of hard to see from the side. Well, now it evened out. That's good. I'll kind of turn it. Can you tell how many bubbles we got there? Four. So what mode is this? Nope. Four, yeah. Yeah, however many bubbles you have, that is the mode that you are in. So... So, again, we've got four little bubbles here, so that is mode number four. That is a node, that is a node, and we've got three nodes in between those. Um, so how many waves are present here? With Two, very good, exactly. Oh, actually, sorry. Can you turn off just this one, which is the one on the far left? You may or may not have seen that there's a quiz tomorrow. I'm going to teach you how to ace that right now. It's going to look exactly like the sheet that I'm giving you. Whoa! That is exactly like the sheet that I'm giving you. Why is my tongue freezing? Why is my tongue freezing? Copier.
And what you're seeing on the screen is our summary for the natural selection unit in comparative origins that we finished up today. I still have those notes. You're welcome. Can I have a note? <laughs> really? You are anti crinkle? Crunkle. Anti crunkle. Yeah. <laughs> No problem. All right. So we're going to go through this together because the quiz tomorrow is going to be this exact thing. The only difference is, yeah, the only difference is you're going to have a different length here. And this is going to be easier than it looks. So worry not, my friends. Yeah, but um, we're going to do it in class. The, the back side you can ignore. We're going to skip the back side. I'm also going to see if I can move myself over. Ah, off the page. That'll have to do. I could only move it a little bit further. Okay. So first mode, it's going to look something like this, like a little football. It's your first bubble there. And why don't we just fill in the rest of these modes right away? So, yeah, just use bubbles. That's totally cool. So the, now you've got two bubbles for the second mode. You go right ahead. Sure. Yeah, it feels like Thursday. Then just draw circles. I'm just making it wave sign. So our goal is simply, given this information, all we know is the frequency of one of these modes. We need to figure out the wavelength for all these, the frequency for all these, and the wave speed for all these. That seems complicated, but we're going to be able to do that in the time that we have left here, seven minutes or whatever it is. It's going to be no problem. Remember, wavelength is equal to length divided by number of waves. So generally, you want to keep um, your wavelength in terms of meters. So 50 centimeters in terms of meters would be 0 0.5 meters. So if I'm going length over number of waves, I've got 0 0.5 meters divided by my number of waves. How many waves are here? Oh, 0 0.5, because our first mode has 0 0.5. So our wavelength is equal to one meter. Well, this the 50 centimeters is the same as half of a meter, 0 0.5 meters. That's where that came from. Uh, you don't have to. If you want to put this in centimeters, you would get 100 centimeters, which is just fine. Yeah, that'll be okay. Um, of course, then when you eventually get to your wave speed, that'll be in centimeters per second, which can get a little complicated. I would strongly encourage you to have this in terms of meters. Um, so that's the first one. Questions on that? No, tomorrow it's going to be something else. 
That'll be the only thing that's different. So that's the first box. So now the second box, we have the same length. It doesn't say that it's changed. So it's 0.5 meters divided by the number of waves. And of course, the number of waves goes up by a half for each mode. So this is divided by 1. So 0.5 meters. And then 0 0.5 divided by 1.5 is 0 0.33 meters. And then you do the same thing down here over 2. So that's 0 0.25 meters. And 0 0.2 is the last one. Questions on the first column. Is that zero point three? Is that what Yeah. And for me, as for my own personal way of doing um, decimals, I use three non zero digits. That's why I carried it to three of them. Okay, so that's the first column. Now, remember your equation. This is on the bottom left, I believe, of your formula sheet wave speed is equal to wavelength times frequency. Hey, we've got a frequency. Hey, we've got a wavelength. Let's multiply them together. 150 times 0.333 is going to get you 50. So that is the wave speed for mode number three. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Now, is our medium changing as we do this? What does that mean for wave speed? Yeah. For real. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to be 50. It's not going to be your answer. But whatever you get for this, you can apply to all of that. I went. Because wave speed is equal to wavelength times frequency. I have this wavelength. I have this frequency. So I multiplied them together. Yep. So you'll have a number that once you have all your wavelengths, you multiply it by that, and that'll get you the wave speed for that mode. You can apply that everywhere and just go from there. Plenty of time. And we got four boxes to fill in yet. So now we can use this same equation to fill in the rest of these boxes. Because now we're solving for frequency, and we've got all the wave speed, and we've got all the wavelength. So if I'm solving for frequency, I would divide both sides by wavelength. So that means now my equation is frequency equals wave speed divided by wavelength. And if you're a triangle person, you would get that same thing from the triangle. Frequency is wave speed divided by wavelength. And you would do that for each of those boxes then. So on the top, your wave speed is 50. Wavelength is 1. So your frequency is 50 hertz. Here, my wave speed is 50. My wavelength is 0 0.5, giving me a frequency of 100 hertz. And you can probably see the pattern here already. But we might as well finish up with the calculations. So frequency again, wave speed, which is still 50, divided by the wavelength, 0 0.25. That's going to get you a frequency of 200. And finally, 50 over 0 0.2 will get you a frequency, no surprise, of 250 hertz. And that's how you fill out the box. I got a full minute, so I'm just going to quick summarize this for you. Number one, draw in your bubbles. 
Number two, calculate your wavelengths. So that's just the length that it's giving you divided by the number of waves. And as you go up for every mode, your number of waves goes up by a half. Once you have all this, you will be given a frequency. You can multiply that frequency by the corresponding wavelength to get your wave speed, which you can apply everywhere. And then you have enough information to calculate the rest of your frequencies. And that's all there is to that. If you need extra help on this or a review, um, feel free to check out the video, which will be on Schoology, or come see me. You do not need to do the back. Your homework for tomorrow is to review the front of this worksheet so you're ready to fill it out again.